Okay, so I know I said I didn't need any more sock yarn, but then... Hello, my name is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations and welcome to my YouTube channel. I like to talk about all things yarny, knitting and crochet, fiber, yarn adjacent. I like to do vlogs and stuff. This is a podcast. This is episode 24. And I also like to do podcasts like this one. This is episode 24 of my crochet and knitting podcast. I love to share about all the things I'm working on here. So if you want to stick around, I would love to have you. So make sure to like and comment down below. Let me know what you enjoy seeing from my podcast, what kind of projects you enjoyed or what yarn caught your eye because some definitely caught mine. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified every time I post a new video. I typically post on Fridays right now is my schedule with the podcast every other week and with other vlogs and product reviews and other type of content on the off weeks of my podcast. Woo. <laughs> as far as like beginning ad mini stuff, I can't think of anything really that's going on. Just trying to kind of pull myself together before things get busy with the holidays and with moving. Did we officially own our house last time? We officially own a house now. Closing paperwork is all done. Money has left our bank account, so we are now house poor. <laughs> we are so very grateful. And now we're just anxiously awaiting for when we can move into that next phase of our lives, into our first home. Some things are kind of wrapping up right now and some things are kind of ramping up right now. So it's kind of a weird transitional time over the next couple months, but it's exciting and all good things. George is, thank goodness, napping right now. So I can talk to you all. Oh my gosh. This is really early for that to be dying. That's not good. Georgia is, thank goodness, napping right now. And so I can spend some time talking with all of you. And my gimbal just died. And it's only three minutes into my filming right now. So that's a problem. I guess we got to get, get going into finished objects. I only have one finished object to share with you. Last time, I had so, so, so many things that I just kind of finished off, different smaller items. So definitely within the past couple weeks, my focus has shifted to bigger long-term projects. So I don't have a lot to show for finished objects, but I have one thing. I just still needed a really quick project. And so I knit Okay, all of the technical difficulties goodness I just got to figure out something different maybe for Christmas I can get something that'll be a better solution for propping up my phone while I'm taking these videos finished objects let's get right into it I've only got one I still really needed an instant gratification project even though I just finished a lot of little things because I'm focusing a lot on some bigger projects and I'm seeing a lot of progress on those projects but it was really nice and refreshing to have something work up super fast I have my Desert Vista Dye Work socks for October, and I think this is the earliest I've ever had them done. So beautiful. Sorry, I'm trying not to cover up my, my face and my mouth while I show these. So pretty. So you'll notice they have kind of a little bit of a marling. I ended up doing DK weight. I held fingering weight double. So what I did, I split my skein of yarn into two equal cakes and I knew that doubling up my yarn and knitting DK weight socks with that fingering weight skein I would use up almost the entire skein to make a pair of socks so knowing that I didn't bother trying to match up my two skeins color wise so that all of the colors would be like all of the color stripes would line up identically in either one sock, you know, holding the strands double or just comparing both socks together. I didn't care about it matching because I just knew I would be playing some yarn chicken and didn't have a lot of wiggle room. So I was just gonna, you know, let the chaos roam, leave it be. I just grabbed one end of yarn from each cake that I had and then just started knitting. And so that created this cool marling effect. Super neat. I really love how it turned out. I was a little hesitant at first to start it, but I think it looks so, so cool. And it ended up being that the colors didn't line up 
ever. So you'll see I have like an extra large blue section. That's because the blue from one skein ended at almost exactly the same stitch that the blue from the opposite skein started. So really, really neat to just see how it all worked out. And you'll notice these socks are literally almost identical. They're only off by like a couple rounds. And that was totally unintentional. It just turned out that way, which is actually kind of really neat. They're almost, almost the same, really close. Honestly, you probably thought they were the same at first glance. So that is actually really fun. I used just like a tan mini from Desert Vista Dye Works for the toes and the heels and I just held it double. So really good as like a stash buster sock <laughs> to do finger weight held double to make a DK nice cozy thick sock. When I make socks out of a 100 gram skein usually maybe I'll use like half the skein if I don't use any contrast color but then if I use a contrast color then I'll only use like 35 40 grams and so I have a lot more of the yarn left over, which isn't a problem, but it is nice to use up almost an entire skein of yarn. And so that's what I did, yay! I need to put these online and submit them for the make-along, but I have my socks done, which feels so good, and I really want more DK weight socks. I think I mentioned that in my last podcast with the other DK weight socks that are still a whip, that haven't been worked on because I still need just a little bit more contrast yarn for them, but I have another pair of DK cozy socks. I need to make some more, I think, is, is where my mood is going. And since we're moving somewhere colder, we're moving from California to Utah, then I think cozy socks are in order. Let's move on into whips. That is the only finished object I have. Finished objects? It's a pair of socks. So let's move on into whips. <laughs> So I have four whips in front of me, which is not a lot, surprisingly. This is all that got my attention recently. Oh, I do have one secret sock test knit that I'm a part of that's almost been released, so I could talk about that after this video. So in the next podcast, I will show those. Hopefully that will be a finished object. So I guess I have five whips total now that I've been working on, one of which I will not be showing today, but that's honestly a lot fewer whips than I normally have going on. I like to just like have my hand in a lot of things and to change what kinds of things I'm working on. I also have so many plans and goals and things that I want to do that I have a hard time finishing things right away. I tend to work on it a little bit and then want to change gears and work on something else. And so then I have a lot of things that I'm just putting a little bit of time in depending on what I want to do. So it's been a little different to only have a couple things and that's because I've only really wanted to work on a couple things. And so I am following my heart and just spending lots of time working on a few projects. I think we should start with the biggest, the longest, knitting whip I have and this is my find your fade shawl and I've honestly put in some good time I think realizing that I hit the halfway mark has helped me to put more time into it because I know I'm closer to finishing than to starting <laughs> this this shawl has just felt so so long oh my goodness and realizing that like I'm using up this yarn feels really good too so let me show you And the nature of this is that it doesn't look like I've done much because it's like the same pattern basically throughout, just in different colors. And I'm still on the color I was on last time. But I put a marker in. <laughs> this is so hard to show. Okay, I put this marker in where I was last time. So I was like midway, maybe two thirds of the way through the lace section. This is just a marker to help me keep track. I'll talk about that later. But I am all the way this far through the next garter section. So awesome. Making some good solid progress. I've been working on this during like my nightly scripture study or in the morning if I get time to study scriptures in the morning, which I usually don't because I usually don't wake up till my daughter wakes me up. I usually spend at least like 15 minutes or so on it every day if nothing more and so that's been really fun to just put in a couple rows every day 
and I think I'm gonna continue to do that because it makes me not feel obligated to work a lot on this at any one time and since the Gardas itch has been really it's been a slog for me I've really not enjoyed it I think it'll be good to just put in a little bit of time most days to work on it and just see it grow and that will help me feel like progress is still happening and obviously it's been working because I've gotten pretty far on it it's been really nice the halfway mark is somewhere around like here I think here I don't know you'll see it kind of squares off and then as I continue on I looked it up the stitch count will not change but the shaping means that this like center spine ends up traveling all the way to the edge and so once it reaches the edge then I think I'm done with my shawl I don't know I have this much yarn left of this cake this is Sorelli yarn her fall tonals from last year and so the names are a little bit different this was Videri when I purchased it but I think right now it's called cottage I'll make sure to leave the proper names down below of what they are currently so that if you like these colors you can buy them because the colors are the same they're just a few of them are named differently so I'll tell you what I know the names as what they are on my labels so this cream is called ceramic this really pale mauve is called cashmere this berry colored mauve is called studio which I think now is called Charlotte if I remember correctly and then this brown is called Videri after some chocolate in the Raleigh area and I think it's called cottage now so these are my four colors for my shawl so I'm fading to dark and then when I run out of the dark brown I'm gonna start fading back to light and so I am almost out of this I think what I'm gonna do see the problem is I didn't weigh my yarn before I started this project and so I don't know how many grams were in each skein I don't think it was exactly a hundred grams usually it's a couple grams more so with that assumption <laughs> And knowing that this pattern uses about 1,500 to 1,600 yards, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave maybe maybe 10 grams of each color. I think is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna keep knitting until I have 10 grams left. The first half of the shawl, I followed the pattern, made the color changes and fades as instructed in the pattern. I should have gone 50 grams or like 45 grams or something and then switch colors and then so then it would kind of match on both sides but it's fine it, it is what it is so now when I have 10 grams ish left of this 10 grams or less I'm going to switch colors but I need to include the fade too I found that each row takes about one gram of yarn so when I have about 15 to 18 grams left of this color I will start to fade in the next color there we go and I'll keep doing that once I have only 15 to 18 grams left of the third color then I'll switch to my second color and do the fade there so hopefully I'll have about 5 to 10 grams of each color left so it'll be about the same and then I can do like scrappy socks or use it for color work in socks or something it's kind of what I'm thinking and so now that I have a plan I can feel comfortable just going ahead and I think I have like 23 grams left of this so I have quite a few more rows before not that many actually only like maybe six rows before I start yeah that's actually not very many so I'm pretty close to starting the fade for the next color so you should see that next time I'm really proud of myself I started this pattern I think on Valentine's Day this year it's on my make nine list and I just really want to get it done this year it's been a slog but I love these colors I know that I'll wear it so so much especially as like a scarf or whatnot I'm proud of myself for putting in time and I've honestly been enjoying it I think it's because I know I'm closer to the end than I am to the beginning knowing that helps me to like not give up and not just like put it aside because I know I will really love it it would be amazing if I got this done before our move in a couple months but I don't know if that'll happen it's not my priority project for sure let me show you what my priority project is though I'm so excited about this 
This is my No Frills sweater by Petite Knit. And I have mentioned it before, but I had purchased the pattern and already started it before I realized it was not as size inclusive as it should be. And so I've messaged the designer because I think the more that we bother her about it, the sooner she will update past patterns. Most of her current patterns are now size inclusive up to a 5X or like a 60 inch bust, but this one is not. It's only up to a 3X. So because I had already purchased the yarn and the pattern, I'm still moving forward with making this sweater. I'm gonna be choosier about the patterns that I purchased to make sure that they are size inclusive so that everybody can make that pattern. This is my no frills. It's so hard to show. It's like sneaky reveal, like how much did I do? How much did I do? I finished a whole sleeve. Okay, so let me talk about kind of what's going on here. I realized I didn't tell you about this stitch marker on my no frills that I promised I would tell you about and it's really not a big deal. This orange one, that was just where the fading should have started if I had followed the pattern. So I wanted to mark that off in case it helped me count my rows, but I don't know if it'll be helpful. But my no frills, let me talk about it. This yarn, oh my gosh, I love it so much. So I've got, this is Ice Lily, it's Knit Picks Palette Yarn. I'll make sure to link it down below. I am an affiliate, so if you purchase through any of the links, then I get a small kickback for referring you to Knit Picks. And so that is a great way to support me by buying things that you may already buy. I think they are a great brand that has quality and inexpensive fibers. I use them a lot in combination with other more pricier yarns like this one. So this is the mower I'm holding double with it. I am holding, this is Madeline Tosh Impressions, this is the mohair line, and this color is called New Moon. So pretty. It's got that mauve. It's almost like an exact match, honestly. It's got mauve, it's got purple and blue and teal in it. So if you look closely at this sweater, you can see that variation in color. Though at first glance, it only looks like it's like a heathered blue purple look, but there's definitely more variation in that mohair color when you look, which is so pretty. So yes, I finished the yoke. Where's my marker? Here's my marker. Okay, I finished the yoke. This is where I was last time. My cute Simply Serving marker, I forgot last time who it was from. This is Simply Serving, super cute crow on a pumpkin, very festive and as a crow. I love all crow things. I just think it's it's a fun little nod to me and my last name. So I finished the yoke. You'll see I split for the sleeves. I knit about another inch or so until I ran out of yarn. I almost ran out on uh, the Knit Picks yarn, but I ran out of the skein of mohair that I was using, and so I figured that was a great place to stop and switch to the sleeves. I really like doing sleeves before the body because then I know for sure that my sleeves are long enough to be comfortable because I didn't want to end up with an awkward length of sleeve if I happen to run out of yarn. I don't think I'll run out of yarn for this project, but it just helps me feel very secure. And that means when I'm going round and around and round for the sleeves, I don't have to worry about the body. There's just so much more fabric that could get in the way. And it's already a pain to like keep like turning your <laughs> sweater to work on a sleeve. And so not doing the body means there's less fabric. So that makes it a little bit easier. So I can do the sleeves, get them out of the way, don't have to worry about a sleeve island situation, and then I can just knit, knit, knit on the body without even thinking about decreases or anything until it is long enough for me. Super awesome. And then that makes it easier to try on too. So I followed the pattern as far as the decreases and everything, and I have thicker arms for my like bust size, but these arms are comfortable on me, which is really great. Nice and roomy for me, and I followed the decreases. Oh, the one thing I did do that was a little bit different on the arms is I added two stitches underneath, and I did that to kind of help close up the gap between the underarm stitches that you cast on and the sleeve stitches, because they're just, they're kind of in different directions because the underarm cast on stitches go with the body. And so it just 
there seems to be like a little gap there and so I wanted to put in an extra stitch at those corners just to help it out a little and then on the very first round I decreased so that was the only thing different that I did and that was really just to prevent holes but I like did the cuff the same length I did just as many decreases and I found that when I did my last row of decreases it was the right length per the pattern and I tried it on and I liked the length on my body as well and so I did I think 20 rounds of the cuff is what ended up being long enough and I liked the number 20 I think I did 19 rounds and I thought that was long enough but I just threw in another round because I liked having an even number instead of 19 for the cuff I thought I would remember it and feel more comfortable with it so that's what I did <laughs> and then I did a tubular bind off and I don't really like how it looks I mean like I don't mind it it just doesn't look as clean as it's been in the past so I don't know what I did wrong I don't know I feel like it looks a little bit more tangled and like curled up on the edge it's supposed to look like your stitches just kind of like roll over the edge and like melt from one side into the other I don't think it looks like that at all right now it doesn't look like that bad I tried it a couple times and it didn't look any better so I'm just leaving it I'll do the other side the same way and then maybe I don't know now I'm thinking maybe I should just look it up and see if I did it wrong because that's probably what happened is I did my tubular bind off wrong I don't know yeah I probably switched something around but I don't think it looks horrible but it's not the look I was going for so that's a little sad I have started my second sleeve just barely just barely I'm like two rounds in that's all I did was start it last night and then I put it down so yeah I'm gonna do the second sleeve and be well on my way I was hoping to have the sweater finished by my birthday I might even finish by the end of this month if no that's that's asking too much it will definitely be done by my birthday my birthday is kind of mid-november so yay so exciting this has been such a joy to knit on because I love the color I love 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 mauve and I love seeing this mohair come to life and it's just so nice and cozy and helps me think that I'm somewhere nice and cool that's experiencing some beautiful fall weather and it's not in the 70s here which is beautiful but it's not the fall weather that I grew up with in New York and I do miss having that chill in the air and the rain it's reminding me of the falls that I grew up with and the winters that are coming and so it's just bringing me a lot of joy right now have you knit a no frill sweater or have you knit another basic sweater that kind of ticks all the boxes for like your favorite basic raglan sweater let me know down below okay so those are my two big projects right now I've got a couple little projects to show you this is my ampulate sock for Road Growing Cades this is a test knit I've not blocked this sock it is for my daughter but I have one sock done for the test knit the pattern is now available I'll try to include some pictures it's a little hard to see with this lighting but you'll see there's like this cool spider stitch and there's the twisted rib to be a drag line which is you know the silk coming from the spider to help them get everywhere the drag lines and the spiders and she has charts in the pattern to help you just you know just follow the charts and what the pattern is but she also has empty charts so you can place your own spiders which I plan to do to make a pair for myself super fun it's against a pearl background which definitely takes longer <laughs> than I thought it would like the sock felt like it took a little bit longer than I'm used to but totally totally worth it I think it's beautiful this yarn is Shirsty Cat Designs in the color Dust Bunny. I really enjoy working with this base. I wish I had the tag. I don't know why I didn't keep the tag. I wound a bunch of yarn when I was moving from Texas to California the first time and we were not gonna have any of our stuff basically. We took a very, very small U-Haul trailer on our drive to our new place. It was a furnished apartment, corporate housing, and so we had like minimum stuff. So I wound a bunch of yarn before we left that I could take with me and I left most of my yarn behind in a storage unit. 
and this is one of the skeins that I brought with me. I think all that yarn I just threw away the labels, which is super, super silly because now I put my labels on the inside of my yarn cakes and that way I can remember what it is until I keep track of it, put it on Instagram, put it on Ravelry, etc., etc. If I've worked with it enough, then like I know what it is and I don't know which base this is, but I really do like the feel of this. So I need to find some Shirsty Cat designs in person and then feel it so that I can figure out which base this is because I do really like it. It's very plump and soft and it's got like a little bit of tooth to it almost. It's got, it's got a good solid feel. So it might be the BFL sock base that she has, but I'm not sure. It's also very soft. So softer than other BFL bases that I've worked with. Sock. One sock is done. All ends are weaved in. I got pictures taken on my toddler's foot, even though she did not want pictures for some reason. She doesn't want to wear the socks I knit her when I want to put them on her feet, but she'll want to wear them any other time. Ain't that the way with toddlers. I started my second sock. I just cast it on. Ta-da! So I have not worked on it in a little bit. I should though, so that she has these socks for Halloween time. I'm hoping that because I have a cord available now, for these that they'll go faster. When I was about halfway through this first sock, my cord broke when I was knitting and so I had to switch everything over to DPNs and that was a pain, but I did it. I knit half a sock on DPNs. Don't ever want to do that again. I didn't really enjoy the DPNs. That's for another time though. But this sock, I now have a cord free. I didn't buy a new cord yet, but I have a cord free finally. So I was able to cast on the second sock and I need to work on that. I've got like a color palette going for like all my whips right now is like moody purples and pinks and stuff. <laughs> you can see what my colors are. These are my fall colors and my summer colors, my spring summer colors are like yellows and peaches and pinks and stuff. <laughs> One more whip to show you. Ooh, I actually haven't picked this up in a few days. I should pick it up though. This is a hat that I've started. Ta-da! And you'll notice that this is the local yarn that I purchased. I purchased this from Amazing Yarns, which is a yarn shop boutique that sells a lot of hand spun, hand dyed, textural art yarns. This is local fiber from sheep that I have seen. There's a farm called Deer Hollow Farm. It's in Cupertino. It's in Rancho San Antonio Nature Preserve County Park. Basically, you can park at this county park and you just walk like a mile into the park and there's a farm there which is so cool it's so fun to go to with little kids and whatnot and they have you know the animals around you can see this wool came from one of those sheep and so I had to buy it because I love 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 going to that farm it's so cool to be able to have some local wool and so I wanted something special I want to finish a hat before we leave so I can go to the farm with my hat and be near the sheep who provided this wool. Makes me so happy. I finally picked my pattern and I've started on it. This is just the bottom ribbing. It's called the loop de hat and I don't remember the designer so I'll pop that up above as well as down below. This is ribbing. It's not a normal ribbing though. You'll notice there's like sometimes it is pearl two and sometimes it's a pearl one and so it kind of you know switches up a little bit it's setting the stage for doing some really cool cables along the hat i'm maybe halfway through the brim not quite halfway it's going to be a fold over brim so it's been nice now that i have the ribbing pattern established it's not as much of a headache to do but the first couple rounds i had to make sure to count and focus that i was putting all the pearl ones in the right sequence since mostly it's just a two by two ribbing but not quite and so yeah Glad that it's now at a point where it's more mindless. I need to work on this a little bit more so I can have it done in time to go visit the farm before we move. So I finally cast that on. I'm so excited about it. This color is so, so pretty. I love it. Such a nice chocolatey brown for my cute local sheep. Okay, so. I've got a bunch of yarn. It just like all happened to show up in my life. So let's talk about it. Cause I have some beautiful, beautiful skeins here. Let's start from the beginning. 
my mom went to Saratoga Springs on a trip just by herself just to enjoy that cute cute little town in upstate New York and she went to the yarn store there and got me some sock yarn this is from Gusto Wool made in Turkey she bought me these so pretty definitely not colors I would normally purchase for myself so this is like fun and different this color is 1509 and this one is 1043 so no fun names but that's okay it's an 8020 merino wool and nylon blend so these are 250 gram skeins and one 100 gram skein so I can make socks maybe fraternal twins like with my husband I'm not sure don't know what, what I'll do with this or I could do like a shawl or something I'm not sure these aren't normal colors that I would purchase for myself so it's fun to have my mom shop for me and to get things that are still really really beautiful that I can kind of think outside the box of what I'd want to make oh there's this really pretty gray in there I really like that so yeah that's really fun it smells good probably from from the yarn store it was in I'll make sure to link it down below and then I got some fun happy mail some pre-orders that I made a couple months ago that are coming in from dyers that I love so this one is from Red Door Fiber Studio so pretty and I wish you could feel this it is so soft my other sock yarns do not compare with how soft this feels so this was a collaboration with Coast to Coast Yarn Co. Kate made two colors to go with the Book Tropes colorways that Coast to Coast Yarn Co. did. And so these are her colors. Found Family and Unrequited Love. So pretty. These are going to be a sock probably. But I just love them. And they fit with my color palette. <laughs> I'm predictable, aren't I? So, so pretty. I really, really love this. And this is my first time purchasing from Red Door Fiber Studio. I have been eyeballing their yarns for a while and I love Kate as a person. It's been really fun to follow her on social media. So I'm so happy that I can finally get some of their yarn. It is a 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. I love it, love it, love it. So Red Door Fiber Studio also includes a bookmark in your order and this one is from Bridgerton which I need to read because I don't have Netflix and so I can't watch it. I need to find the books and start reading them. And next thing of Happy Mail also from a Kate. This is Mezzo Makes Fiber. They did a Shakespeare collection and this is what I got. Two colorways to make a autumn in the foothills shawl I think it's gonna be on my list of things to make next year I'm not sure if I'll do a make nine or like a 23 things to make in 2023 which is kind of what I'm leaning towards but I haven't quite decided yet what my what my knitting and crochet goals will be next year but these colors are this is Kate got that fun like mossy green in it and this one is called the taming of the shrew and I love these two together. I've got a color palette. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> but a couple things that are not in my like immediate color palette right now. I don't just knit mauve things. I went to the Half Moon Bay 50th annual pumpkin festival. And I'll talk more about this in like talking about life stuff. But I got a couple skeins of yarn because Fengari... I don't know if I'm saying that Fengari yarn is on Historic Main Street in Half Moon Bay and I've been there before I just popped in with some friends that also like to knit it's been so fun having yarny friends that are local to me but we popped in with our kiddos took a good look didn't end up buying anything but I had this one skein in my head that I was actually kind of sad that I left behind and so I went back for it this is Araucania yarns Huasco Sock base. It is a 7525 superwash wool and polyamide base. And so that's why I grabbed it because I've only knit with a 7525 polyamide blend once before. It was the Are You Smocking Me socks by Alindria Knits that I tested recently. And I used yarn from Monostel Uruguay. And I loved the feel of that yarn. It was soft. It had really good grip. Like it was a little bit toothy. 
it had a sheen to it it was really plump it was a great yarn to knit with and so when I saw this blend content I knew I wanted to try it I finally on this trip I made sure to grab it it's this really beautiful color ray it's called Himalayan Rose Finch so pretty it'll be a really pretty variegated color ray to work up nice and springy summery I'm so excited because I don't see this blend of wool and polyamide very often and I just wanted to see is it just the mono still Uruguay yarn or is it something special with the blend too it feels really soft to me and so I think it might be the blend itself and so that would be really fun to know for sure that that's a blend I really like to work with so I got that skein and then surprise surprise there was some yarn from Moss and Wand there. They had lots of really beautiful colors. So I don't know if they've done a trunk show recently or whatnot. That was really fun to look at, but one color caught my eye. The Dyer of Moss and Wand created a colorway inspired by the 50th annual Pumpkin Festival mural that was painted by Julie Engelman. But based on this mural, the Dyer made this colorway. And I think it is a great fit. It's called Forever Your Pumpkin. It's perfect for the mural. So nice, I love it. So it's really awesome to have a special exclusive colorway for that event that we went to. So that was really cool. I think it's really fun to have this yarn in my stash. It's a 75-25 Superwash Merino and Nylon blend. So we'll see what these become. Probably socks, but you never know with like you know part of a shawl or something I think it's a beautiful colorway really special to have okay let's talk about some life happenings okay the only really big life happening thing that I can think of right now is that my husband's parents came to visit us and they were here for a long weekend for their fall break they were both teachers and so that was so fun that they could come and visit here they hadn't visited us here in this apartment the not corporate housing apartment now that we have our stuff again if you haven't been following along we've lived here about a year and they hadn't visited us here in this apartment yet so they came and visited us and they were able to stay with us for a few days and it was so nice it felt so short but we made sure to spend some time together. We went frisbee golfing and oh my goodness, Georgia was so cute. She really loved it. And I have a little mini driver disc that's like this big that I bought once from like a Dick's Sporting Goods because it was cute. And so it was perfect for her to play with. So she was throwing it all over the place and following us along and like helping us find our discs. And like she would like put her disc in the pin. She had so much fun for like seven holes like her stamina was amazing so that was really fun to go do that as a family go do some walks together we went to the beach we went to a beach near Half Moon Bay it was really nice had some really nice sand actually and we also went to the pumpkin festival oh my goodness I had no idea that this thing was going on but it's the 50th annual pumpkin festival and it was a huge deal on Half Moon Bay and traffic was horrendous <laughs> to get there and so we ended up choosing to go the long way because it would take the same amount of time we thought there'd be less traffic and we could take the scenic route on the US one down the coast and it worked out all right until we got to Pacifica which is just north of Half Moon Bay we ran into some cyclers so they were doing I'm talking about this because it just was all part of our day and it was really interesting to see so the million dollar challenge was a cycling event to fundraise money for para athletes and to like create more opportunities for people with disabilities to be athletic is my understanding and so they started on Saturday the day we went to the pumpkin festival they started on Saturday in San Francisco and we're biking all the way south to San Diego so a big chunk of California it's like 640 miles or something they were going it's a long way and when we hit Pacifica we also ran into a bunch of these bikers these cyclers and it was really cool to see there was people pulling like trailers with someone inside it like a bike trailer with someone inside it like pulling them along for the trip people using hand bikes all sorts of really interesting things and it was really cool to see people do that with parts that were two-lane highways 
it, that was winding in the mountains a little bit and along the coast and then also bikers on the shoulder like it just traffic was so backed up with that plus the pumpkin festival itself was causing traffic to back up so it was a long long trip there <laughs> but we made it we had to do a little bit of walking to get there but we found free parking so it was totally worth it and we just walked down it was like historic main street there were all sorts of vendors and like local artisans which is really cool all the shops were open to go in and browse they had a little parade where like the giant pumpkin was on a trailer and like went through the like the area they had a pumpkin carver, they had amazing pumpkin pie that we got to eat, they had other like street performers and stuff, so it was fun. In retrospect, I can say like, wow, that was really fun, but it was also kind of overwhelming <laughs> for like introverted people who have also spent a lot of time to ourselves with like the pandemic and such. And so it was a lot and it was tiring, but it was fun. I'm so glad we went. We would not have gone if my husband's parents hadn't come to visit and suggested it, but I'm really glad that we did go. And man, that pumpkin pie was so good. And now we were able to take part in it. And I got that beautiful yarn and I saw the mural it was based off of covering the side of a building. It was really cool. It was just a cool, cool experience. Other than that, and just like kind of hanging out with family, we didn't really do much like Saturday was our big day to go out and do things and then Friday and Sunday we mostly just went on walks and played games and hung out and talked and it was just what we needed it was so nice we're going to move a lot closer to them we're gonna be only like 30 minutes away from them when we move in a couple months and so that'll be really good that they can spend a lot more time with Georgia because she had so much fun when they were here it's really special having family that is so loving and that we can really enjoy being with. And that's true for both sides of our family. So it was really great to have them visit us and I'll be able to visit my family for Christmas this year, which we are so looking forward to. Since they live all the way in New York, it'll be really good to spend some solid quality time with them. So yeah, we are very grateful for our families and that at least we'll be moving closer to one of them when we move into our new home. I've been talking about books a little bit. I don't have a lot to share, but I have one book that I just recently read and I blew through it. It's what I've been reading while I've been working on my no frill sweater. I have my Kindle propped up on a little pillow and I will have my knitting in my lap and I can't like knit without looking at all, but I can slowly read and knit at the same time. And I just really enjoy that kind of slow knitting disconnected from social media routine is that the right word yeah it's kind of it's a routine it's a like that mindful practice of like knitting and reading at the same time I really enjoy that so that's been really fun and my no frill sweater has been the perfect project to do that for and so I read wrong place wrong time by Jillian McAllister I loved it basically it's a thriller novel. This woman sees her 18 year old son stab someone right in front of her, has no idea who that man is, has no idea why her son has done this, and she goes to bed that night wondering what in the world they're going to do to help her son, who is now a criminal and like in police custody. She wakes up the next morning and it is actually the day before. So this whole book, she keeps waking up the next morning, but it's not the next day. She goes back in time every time she goes to sleep. She'll wake up on days that are significant to the truth of the situation at hand to help her better understand her son's role, her husband's role, this random man that got stabbed's role, the police, you know, she's learning about this whole situation and organized crime and like just putting the puzzle pieces together to learn about what's really going on and also trying to figure out the catalyst for changing the overall outcome of her son stabbing a man and moving back forward in her life rather than continuing to go backwards to like learn about what's happening. So really interesting story. It was so interesting to read in that timeline going backwards 
and I love that every chapter or so you would learn something and so I felt like there were like little twists and turns along the way like the whole way and so the final ending wasn't totally out of left field but like the whole book is kind of like winding around and kind of showing you bit by bit kind of as she is learning bit by bit and you're kind of getting a better understanding of what's really going on and it had a nice ending that was happy because a lot of thrillers that I've read involve a seemingly crummy person who maybe sees a murder of another crummy person and then you find out someone that you thought was good all along is actually a super crummy person who did the murder and so you just feel yucky after that it's not wholesome <laughs> and you know sometimes you're in the mood for that but I feel like a lot of thrillers are like that that have been popular recently and I'm just like over it like the silent patient and the woman on the train and you know I'm just like I just need something that makes me feel good and so it's nice to read a book about good people who are maybe mixed up in some bad stuff who in the end are still really good people it's refreshing in a thriller and I love a good cheesy ending I liked it a lot <laughs> so I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet I know it's been really popular recently the waitlist for audiobooks is very long so I borrowed a copy from my friend but I loved it I'm not sure what I'm gonna read next I might just read something comfortable like Pride and Prejudice or Emma or something from Jane Austen something else that's kind of more feel good but we shall see that's kind of all the media I've been consuming. I have not been watching hardly any YouTube because I've been reading and knitting and that's been really nice to just disconnect in that way. So I kind of want to continue that practice and at least dedicating a little time every evening to just reading and knitting and slowing down just a little bit. Thank you so much for being here with me through technology issues and trying to fit this in in a nap. I am so happy to be here. I love sharing what I'm working on and it's really cool to see the progression of things and how my knitting mojo changes. I had crochet last time. I don't have any crochet today. It's just, you know, what I feel like working on ebbs and flows. And so I guess we shall see what I have to share with you next podcast. I feel like some things are always expected, but then there's always a few unexpected things that I end up sharing with you. If you want to stick around, I'd love to have you. Please subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever I post a new video and let me know down below what projects you enjoyed maybe what new yarn I have you think I should cast on next for maybe a fun pair of socks just for me just for fun until next time happy making bye Thank you.